program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 206 regarding a missing person. Described as a male American, 5 feet 9 and 1 half inches. Weight about 140 pounds. Light complexion. Was wearing a light gray suit when last seen at 2 o'clock on the morning of June 13th. That's all. Rose and Quiz. of amateurs as to the maintenance of our good health. Instead, when necessary, we seek the expert advice of a doctor. And so, with the maintenance of your car, pass up the whimsical advice of the amateur, one-day-a-week driver when it comes to gasoline, and follow the expert advice of those men who drive the most and buy the most gasoline. They are the drivers and buyers of gasoline for your police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment. These qualified authorities say Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline is the one and only motor fuel that has all the qualities which are absolutely essential in the peak performance of emergency equipment. Immediate one-punch starting, smoother acceleration, maximum available speed, greater reserve power, and longer mileage. These authorities have enjoyed 55 million miles worth of Rio Grande Cracked last year alone, and they know what they are talking about. Join the parade of the motor wise by dropping in at the nearest Rio Grande station tomorrow morning and asking the attendant for a tank full of that police car performance, Rio Grande Crack, the highest recommended gasoline in the West. opportunity of presenting authentic cases taken from the confidential files of the police department. It is also our privilege and pleasure to bring to this program Chief of Police James E. Davis. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. In passing sentence on the criminal we shall soon hear about, the judge of the court recommended that the parole board take his words as literal in their strict interpretation and that no mercy be shown in the execution of that sentence. The brutality of this man's crimes was so great that an unusually broad-minded jurist felt he should be shown no consideration or mercy. The swift and sure work of the police officers who handled the case made a further career of crime impossible for this man and showed him and others most conclusively that crime of any sort does not pay. Balmy summer evening in June, two men walking along Fifth near Los Angeles Street approach a taxi cab. Hey, where's the taxi driver? Uh, he's inside playing pool. How do you know? Yeah, uh, show him go in. I'll get him out. I'll get him out. I'll get him. What's going on here? What's all that noise? We want to ride. No. I can't afford to ride. You got no money. I got plenty of dough. Come on. No, I don't want to ride. Come on, you're going for a ride and like it. Well, I'll go, but you won't like it. Get in. Where to? Anywhere. Anywhere in particular? No, just around. Okay, pal. you got, pal? I ain't got no money. Just my watch and knife. Watch and knife, huh? Give me him. I say, you can't do that to me. I said, give me him. I won't give you my watch. Get away. Give me that watch. I, I want out of this car. Hey, you, stop the car. Keep going, you. Get back here. I'm going to take that watch. <laughs> you can keep your knife. Yeah, what's this? I thought you said you didn't have no dough. Uh, give, give me back that. It's all I got. Well, ain't that too bad. I'm keeping it, see? 
Give me back my money. I'll call a cop. Hey, what? Oh, thank goodness, I'm an old man. Don't hit me no more. Is that too bad? How do you like that? Oh, don't do that. that. Oh, that. oh, you're that. killing that. me. Oh, please, don't hit me That's again. just what I'm going to oh, do, you old sap. Don't do it. Oh. Hey, you stop the car. My pal here wants to get out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right, buddy, get going. Where's your friend? He's staying here. Button your lip and let's go. On the evening of June 12th, two men are walking along East 5th Street. They approach a taxi cab parked at the curb. How about a ride around town, old timer? Nope, I don't want to. No, a couple of good speaks. Nope, I don't want to. Ah, come on, be a good sport. Let's go get a drink. Nope, I don't drink. Oh. I, uh, know a couple of good looking dames. Hey, hey, blonde or brunette? You name them and you can have them. Hey, okay, let's go. <laughs> okay. Say, I wonder where that taxi driver is. I ain't seen him. I'll get him. All right, keep your shirt on, keep your shirt on, I'm coming. I'll yeah, get a move on you, chum. Yeah, we're in a hurry. Wherever you're going, Grandpa, you ain't needing to get there in a hurry. Hey, uh, you just keep your mouth shut, young fella. We know what we're doing. That's what you think. Get going. Where to? Anywhere. Anywhere in particular? No, just around. Okay, Pam. Money, Pop? A little. How much? Uh, no. Let me see it. No. I want a drink. Okay, Pop. Wrap your lips around this. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, hey, hey. That's potent. Yeah. That's the way I like it. Uh, give me another one. Okay, if you think you can take it. Here you are. <clears throat> hey, you got a kick like a mule. Yeah, it is, hey. isn't it? Hey. How much dough you got, Pop? <laughs> I got 50 bucks, I have. Whoopee! <laughs> this is my night to howl. Whoopee! Yeah, go ahead, you <laughs> sap howl. Hey, young fella, you get away from that pocket. Keep still. Get away from me. Let me out of here. Get back in here, you. Help. Let me out of Keep here. Keep away from that door. Get out of here, you sap. You want to fall out? He's all the money I got in the world. <laughs> yeah, well, ain't that too bad. Here's something to take it. Oh, oh, don't do that. I ain't done nothing to you. Who cares about that? Here's another one to remember me. Oh, please don't. Don't kill me. I, I ain't done uh, you no harm. Shut up, you old sap. Stop your squawking oh. feet. Oh, oh. stop it. Oh. Oh. Hey, you. Stop the car. My pal wants to get out. Okay, Sam. Okay, get going. Me too. Third in L.A. Sutton? Yeah, and don't talk so much. Well, hiya, babe. What are you doing here? Well, that's a to you, big boy. <laughs> Come on, babe, give us a drink, will you? What's wrong with you buying yourself one? Okay, sister, that's just what I will do. Hey, Joe. Joe, come here. Give me a pint, will you? Yep, as when you pay up for last night. Ah, smart guy, eh? No, but I get my money before you get any liquor. All right, all right, wise guy. I'll just pay you, though. Here, thanks, pal. Now, what'll it be? Nothing you've got. Come on, babe. Let's get out of this joint. Just a minute, boyfriend. I got a date. Yeah? Where is he? Over there at that table. Talking to Sutton. Ah. Well, I don't like his face. Ah, come on, honey. Don't be like that. What's your so-called husband going to say about it? Same thing he says when I'm out with you. I'm going to handle that guy someday. You and who else? I don't need nobody else. I'm tough, I am, see? And how? Go on, scram. You make me sick. I'm sticking around. Hey, here comes the boyfriend. I'll introduce you. I don't want to meet him. Too late, big boy. Sorry to be away so long, babe. But Sutton had a lot of things to talk about. We're putting a line in here next week. Oh, that's swell, honey. Uh, this is an old friend of mine. Yeah, and a real old one. Well, uh, I'm glad to meet you. Oh, no, you ain't. If you feel that way about it, 
I guess we'll be seeing you later. Come on, baby. No, you ain't. Just staying right here, see? You're drunk. Better chase along. Who's drunk? You are. Oh, come on, you two. Stop quarreling. Let's go home. All right, baby. I'll get the car and meet you on the front. Well, honey. Hey, who is that guy? None of your business. Don't hand me that. I said, who is he? Now, listen, you big gorilla. He's a friend of mine. It's enough for you or anybody else. Uh, you got any dough? Yeah, plenty. What does he work? How should I know? I thought you said he was a friend of yours. He is a special friend. Yeah. I'll bet he is a that. Oh, snap out of it, kid. Be regular for a change. Try to sober up. Say, why don't you go home? I ain't got the taxi fare. A taxi? <laughs> for the love of Mike, take a bus. Bus? What's eating you? The last bus left for Hollywood an hour ago. Oh, is it that late? Oh, gee, I better be getting home. Come on, we'll drop you off. Okay. What will your boyfriend say? He won't say anything. He's a gentleman. Oh, yeah? Meaning I'm not. Sometimes I doubt it. You know, you're going to shoot off your mouth once too often someday. So what? So I'll take a poke at that silly mug of yours, so what? What took you so long, babe? Oh, we had another argument. What about? I told that big boy we'd drop him off in Hollywood. Well, All uh... these about broke, and the last bus is left. All right, if you want to take him. Up in the back. You sure I'm not putting you out? Shut up and get in. Listen, why don't we take you home first, babe? Then I can take your friend home. Well... Yeah, that'll be a swell idea. Oh, that'll be all right with me. All right, that's what we do. to have you come in, but it's a little late. Oh, that's all right. I'll see you Sunday. Okay. Run along now. Throw that gorilla out anywhere in Hollywood. Good night. Be seeing you. Good night. Hey, want to get up in front? Yeah. Might not be a bad idea. Where do you live? Hollywood. That's rather indefinite. Isn't anywhere it? out there will do. My girlfriend don't find out a double date is nice. Two timer, huh? Not exactly. I met Babe down at Sutton's after I took the girlfriend home. Babe's all right. Yeah. Okay, let me out here. Why, this isn't Hollywood. Never mind, it said let me out here. Just as you say, buddy. I'll be seeing you. Oh, uh, yeah? Come on, get out. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Just what are you driving at? I'll show you what I'm driving at. Get out, get out, I say. Okay, pal, if you feel that way about it. Why, no. Mr. Welch hasn't lived here for two or three months. He moved over on Chateau Place somewhere. Now, see, do you happen to know where he works? Yes. I think he works at Gladding McBean. Well, is he a drinking man? Oh, he takes a drink now and then. Not very much, though. Have any girlfriends, or well, letters that you know about? He used to go around with my stepdaughter quite frequently. Does she live here? No. She's staying with a friend of hers out on Wilshire somewhere. Ah, I see. Well, thank you. We'll go out and have a talk with her. Said you know a chap named Welch. Why, yes, I know Mr. Welch very well. Uh, see, when did you see him last? Night before last. What time did he leave your house? Oh, about two o'clock. Was he, uh, had he been drinking? Why, no. Why? Oh, it was nothing, nothing particular. We've got a missing person report on him, just trying to check up on him. Well, did you try Gladding Bean? He works there. Oh, yes, yes, we did, but he hasn't been to work in two days. Oh, well, something must have happened to him. He wouldn't stay that stayed away from work that oh, long. I wait a there's nothing to worry about. They say at the office that sometimes he takes a trip out of town. He's gone a couple or maybe three days at a time. I know, but he always tells me he's going to do that. He never mentioned it when he left. Uh, the old say, by the way, what kind of car does he drive? A Studebaker touring car. Uh, have you seen it lately? He drove up in the car when he was here Saturday night. Did he say anything about having an accident? No, nothing at all. Uh, see? Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. If you hear from him, tell him to call us at the Hollywood station, will you? Oh, surely. What do you think, Jim? Uh, probably got drunk, got into an accident, and is laying low. Maybe in one of the hospitals. <laughs> How does his car get parked at Fountain and Kenmore? Well, 
Answer the question. Uh, let's go back to the station and check in. Returning to the Hollywood station, the two detectives find a message from Lieutenant Warren of the Wilshire Division, requesting that they come to the Wilshire station immediately to question two girls who have come to Warren with information regarding the recent taxi cab attack. Uh, Jim, this is Babe Wagner and Miss Detective uh, Mahoney and Kling. Hi, right, Miss Ryan. Right. Wagner. Babe tells me she knows something about these taxi cab beatings we've had lately. Yeah, where do we come in on? She says the fellow that's been doing them lives in, lives in Hollywood. Who's he? Well, his name's O'Brien. I'm not sure he's the right man, though. We'll find that out. Now, what's your information? Well, I was down at Sutton Saturday night with a friend of mine, and this fellow came in. Mm-hmm. He'd been drinking. He looked as though he'd been in a fight. I asked him about it. He said he'd been in a fight with a guy in a taxi cab. Uh, so you know this fellow well? Yeah, pretty well. What else happened? Well, I got my boyfriend to take me home. When we left, we took Jack. That's O'Brien with us. Mm-hmm. He wanted to get to Hollywood, and the last bus had left. Take him with you? Yeah. Take him all the way home, huh? Well, the boys took me home first, and they went on to Hollywood. What makes you think this O'Brien is mixed up in these taxi fights? Well, well, I saw him Friday afternoon, and he said he was broke. I saw him again Saturday afternoon, and he had a lot of money and a new watch. Saturday night, he had still more money. He was complaining about not having more than one suit. Sunday morning, he comes over to my house and asks if he can change his clothes there. He has two suits. Oh, sir, this is all getting complicated. Listen, maybe you better start at the beginning. Well, this Jack O'Brien had a blue suit. Yes, yes, that's what you said. Yes. Then he phoned me Sunday morning about 8 o'clock. He said he had an accident, and he wanted to come over and change clothes. Uh, what kind of accident? Automobile. Uh, then what? Well, he came over and he had another suit, and his blue one was all bloody. Well, now we're getting somewhere. How did he say he got the blood on his blue suit? I told you he said he'd been in an accident, and a man had been killed. I told him he ought to report it to the police, and he said he couldn't because they'd get him for the Nelson job. Uh, Nelson? Yeah. Hey, that's the name of that Swede who got beat up and thrown out of that taxi. Yeah, you're right. All right, what else did he say? Well, he didn't say anything that I remember, except that he wanted to leave his blue suit, and that he'd get it Monday and have it cleaned. Did he get it? Yeah, he took it down to the place where he works and had it cleaned. At least I guess he did. Did he leave anything else? Yeah, he left a shirt and some other things. I've got them in a bundle in the poverty room. They've been soaked in water, but there's blood on them. Okay, so where does this bird work? The Queen Anne Cleaners and Dyers. All right, you just forget about telling us all this till we pick up Mr. O'Brien. Do you happen to know where he lives? Nope, only that it's in Hollywood. All right, never mind, just forget about it. We'll check up on the cleaning joint first. <laughs> Manager? Uh, yes, sir. I'm Mahoney. This is Lieutenant Kling, police department. I'm looking for a man named Jack O'Brien. He worked here? Well, he did. What do you mean he did? Well, he came by my house early yesterday morning and left his truck and undelivered clothes. Said he was quitting. Give any reason? Well, he said he was in some sort of trouble. Said detectives were after him. Did anybody around here looking for him? No, I just put it down to too much gin. Forgot about it. Did he leave anything here? I mean, uh, suits or anything. Well, he left a blue serge suit here to be cleaned. Uh, so you notice anything wrong with it? Any uh, peculiar stain? Yes, it uh, had a lot of blood on it. As a matter of fact, I held it out when it came from the steam vat. Didn't send it to the spotting department. I meant to talk to O'Brien about it. Uh, we'd like to take that suit with us, uh, if you don't mind. Sure, just so I get a receipt for it. Where will give you a receipt for it? Where's this O'Brien live? Uh, just a minute. I'll look uh, at my record book. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here it is. 4920 Townsend Avenue. 4920 Townsend Avenue. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. We'll call on O'Brien. Well? A uh, police officer. We're looking for Jack O'Brien. Never heard of him. Oh, yes, you have. We happen to know he lives here. And he's in some pretty serious trouble. Now, if you don't want some of it yourself, you'll tell us where he is. I don't know where he is. But he does live here. Sometimes, when he's sober enough to get home. Does he pay his rent regularly? Sometimes, when he's not too drunk and too drunk to know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Does he drink much? Like a fish. Where's his room? Just across the hall. When does he uh, usually get home? About this time in the afternoon. Okay, we'll wait. And don't tip him off if he comes in. Don't worry. I don't care what he does. Hmm. Pleasant sort. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like about these places. 
the uh, home-like atmosphere. <laughs> Well, doesn't look like he came home last night anyway. Probably out beating up some old man again. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Look out that window. There's a car parking across the street. That yeah, doesn't mean anything. The bird's getting out of it. So what? No sign he's all, man. I'll bet you on it. We'll see. It is coming to the house, all right. All right, O'Brien, keep your hands right where they are. What is this? Who are you? This is an arrest and we're police officers. Oh, cops, huh? That's one word for it. Well, I got a better one. But you ain't got nothing on me, well, see? In that case, you wouldn't mind riding back to the station with us, would you, O'Brien? You ain't got nothing on me. And besides, my name ain't O'Brien, see? You're making a mistake, copper. Well, we'll have to risk that. <laughs> O'Brien is taken to the Hollywood station and allowed to cool his heels in the detective's office while Mahoney and Kling take his picture to be identified by his former employer and his two alleged victims. Babe Wagner is brought in and retells her story in the presence of the suspect. All right, Gun. You ready to admit your Jack O'Brien? Yeah, I guess so. Give me a drink, will you? And you're ready to admit beating up old man Smith and that fellow Nelson? No, no, I never done it. I never they done it. They both identify you as the man who beat them in a the taxi cab. That rat says identity's lying. Who is? Buckley. Oh, you know that taxi driver, do you? Huh? Oh, no, no, I never heard of him. Oh, I'm sick of this, Stalling O'Brien. We're going to lock you up on assault charges. Jim, Charles Palmer's out here. Says he wants to talk to you about that missing person report on his roommate. Yeah, okay, send him in. I'll talk to him in a minute. Now, O'Brien... I give you just one minute to make Thanks. up your mind to talk. So tell him, Mahoney, uh, Say, what are you doing with Welch's suit on? This ain't Welch's suit, it's mine. I bought it three months ago. You're lying, you rat. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's all this? That, that's Tom Welch's suit he's got on. Yeah, he yeah, killed yeah. him. Now take it easy, take it easy. That's then. the suit Tom had on Saturday night when he left the house. What did you do with his body? I hit it. I never saw it. I don't know what you're talking about, Don't see? you lie to me. I'll break every bone in that thick head of yours. Tom was my friend. My pal, do you hear me? You killed him, and I'm going to kill you! No! Get none of that, Palmer. I'll lay off. Lay off, I tell you. Get O'Brien up, please. Come on, get on your feet. Put me at him. Let me finish him. Come on, O'Brien. Did you kill Welsh? Answer me, did you kill him? Yeah. Yeah, I killed him. Where's the body? Back of a signboard in West Adams. Up close to Hind Street. How'd you do it? I beat him to death with a rail in the back of his car. How did it happen? Well, I told him to stop the car. I told him I was going to teach him a lesson, see? He got out of the car and he said... Okay, pal, if that's the way you feel about it. I don't like your face, see? I'm going to change it. That's so. Yeah, yeah, that's so. <coughs> All right, you are. Frick. That's so. Oh, you're going to teach me a lesson? <coughs> I'm going to show you. Hey, hey, put that bar down. What are you going to do with that? I'll show you what I'm going to do, you rat. <coughs> oh! oh. <coughs> Just the way it happened. But why did you kill him? I wanted that gray suit he was wearing. Is that your only reason? Yeah. You see, I had my blue suit clean. Motorists by the millions in 45 nations of the world face the winter months with a smile. Secured in the knowledge that whatever stormy winds may blow or warm spells intervene, they will have no motor worries with all-weather Sinclair motor oils in the crankcase. Drive into your Rio Grande dealer tomorrow morning. Take on a crankcase full of Sinclair Opaline, the smoother, stronger lubricant that comes to you in tamper-proof cans at only 25 cents a quart. And while there, be sure to ask for your free copy of the newest edition of the Calling All Cars News. Read the page one story, Confession by Movie. Other detective and mystery stories, you will thoroughly enjoy them. More than two full pages of pictures, up-to-the-minute gossip of radio and screen stars, and another assortment of brain befuddlers. Merely ask for your free copy at the Rio Grande station, where you Sinclairize for safety with Sinclair motor oil, and get police car performance with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Again, our pleasure to present Chief Davis. 
O'Brien was given a preliminary hearing on July 2nd, and after a mass of evidence had been presented, proving conclusively that he not only brutally attacked Nelson and Smith, but had murdered Welch for the clothes he wore. O'Brien changed his plea to guilty and was sentenced to life imprisonment in San Quentin. Thus, the sponsors of calling all cars present another lesson proving that crime does not pay. Thank you, Chief Davis. Attention all cars. Cancellation of broadcast 206 regarding a missing person. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. Rolls and quizzes. <laughs>